Our next question is what is a package a package is nothing but a group of similar type of classes interfaces and sub packages which are grouped together it provides access protection and removes name collection so the packages include lan util net awt and so on in java library so your lan will consist of all the packages or sub packages which forms language support whereas the program to help programmers organize information can be grouped under util the program to simplify graphical programs is under awt so similarly you will be grouping sub packages into a major package and that is known as packages these pattern of questions are highlighted in interviews of wipro and hcl technologies let us see our next question what is exception handling exception handling is a mechanism to handle runtime errors it is mainly used to handle checked exceptions so if there is an exception it will be run using your try block and if there is an exception that occurs in the try block that will be caught using your catch block so this is known as exception handling and it is done to detect runtime errors let us see our next question can finally block be used without catch the answer is using try block yes finally is the method that can be followed either by try or catch statement so finally block can be used without catch just by using your try block can an interface be final your interface cannot be final that is the answer because its implementation is provided by another class hence it can't be final these pattern of question are highlighted in interviews of mindtree and emphasis let us move on to our next question what is the difference between throw and throws the throw keyword is used to explicitly throw an exception whereas throws is used to declare an exception checked exceptions cannot be propagated with throw only whereas checked exceptions can be propagated with throws alone that is using your throws keyword throw is followed by an instance whereas your throws keyword is followed by a class throw is used within a method whereas your throws keyword is used with the method signature you cannot throw multiple exception whereas you can declare multiple exception example public void method throws input output exception or io exception or sql exception so you can declare multiple exceptions with throws keyword so that makes the major points which 
differentiates between your throw and throws keyword. Let us move on to our next question. How many ways we can create the string object? The answer is there are two ways to create a string object by using your string literal and by a new keyword. If you see, you can create a new string object say Java can be done using string literal which is having the command as str literal and then a second method is using a new keyword the statement is str object so that is the object of type string is initialized to new string and the value is java so this is a syntax for using new keyword to create a string. Our next question is how many objects will be created in the following code? That is in the following code how many objects will be created? Only one object can be created. Each time you create a string literal the Java virtual machine checks the string constant pool first. If the string already exists in the pool, then a reference to the pool instance is returned. So that will return a reference. If the string doesn't exist in the pool, then a new string instance would be created and placed in the pool. So in this case, there will be two references returning back in for your S2 and S3 objects. So we have only one object which is having the value as welcome and that will be referenced for S2 and S3. These type of questions are highlighted in interviews of Wipro and HCL technologies. Let us move on to our next question. What is the basic difference between string and string buffer object? The answer is string is an immutable object whereas your string buffer is a mutable object. Immutable in the sense you can't change it once you create it. Whereas your string buffer can be changed or altered after creating it. Let us see our next question. Question is, what is garbage collection? Garbage collection is nothing but a process of reclaiming the runtime unused object. And it is mainly performed for memory management. It is nothing but cleaning up the unwanted objects that is achieved during your runtime using a garbage collector. Let us see our next question. What is the difference between the keywords final, finally and finalize? The answer is final. Final is a keyword and it can be a variable, method or class. You can't change the value of any variable or method which is declared with the keyword final. And if it is a method 
that is declared with the word final then you can't override the method if your class is declared with the final keyword then you can't inherit the class so this is the purpose of using the keyword final here if you see we are declaring the variable x of type int to be 100 using the final keyword so again if i declare x or initialize x with some other value that will throw me a compile time error so that is the use of final keyword next we have a keyword finally finally is a block that is used for exception handling in exception handling you'll have a try and a catch block and the finally block will be always executed if you see over here in our example we have a try block that is having a catch as well so in your try block we are having the value of x to be 300 and the catch block will print the value of e since this doesn't have any sort of relation this part doesn't have any output to be thrown whereas your finally block will be executed so at that point of time your output will be finally block is executed because your finally block will be always executed in exception handling so that returns some value or the other even if errors occurs in your program so that is the purpose of finally block next we have the keyword as finalize finalize is a method and it is used in garbage collection your finalize method is invoked just before the object is garbage collected the finalize method can be used to perform any cleanup processing if you see over here we have declared a class finalize example and the method finalize is present over here it is used for garbage collection so since we are assigning the values of two objects f1 and f2 of the class finalize example to be null when you execute it you have the garbage collected and display finalize called these pattern of questions are highlighted in interviews of my tree and emphasis let us move on to our next question what is serialization in Java an answer is when an object can be represented as a sequence of bytes that includes the objects data as well as information about objects type then the types of data stored in the object so this is known as serialization in serialization the object is represented as a sequence of bytes which can be a stream of bytes as well and that bytes include the object's data as well as information about the object's type and types of data that can be stored in the object so these are gathered and further processed and stored in a file db or memory so this is known as serialization in java Let us see our next question. What is synchronization in Java? Synchronization is the process of 
allowing threads to execute one after another. Synchronization controls the access of multiple threads to a shared resource. Without synchronization of threads, one thread can modify a shared variable whereas your another thread will be modifying the same variable. So that will lead to significant errors. So this is what meant by synchronization. These pattern of questions are highlighted in interviews of Infosys and Polaris. Our next, thank you so much for joining GTEC on Java interview tips. Hope now we have got an idea of questions based on Java.